1 Corinthians 15, 22 says that for as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. So we know that in Christ Jesus, we are alive. We see the power of God manifested and there was life. Uh, Lord, as we go through your word, we pray that you speak to our hearts. Amen. Today we are going to be sharing from the theme, God's power manifested. As we continue on in the Easter season, different people look at this season differently. Some look at it as just time to pass, or maybe just a holiday to keep at home. And some of us, or even most of us, look at it as a time our Lord Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. It was just on Monday morning, I met one of our neighbors, and she tells me, Yazuki de Yesu, meaning that he resurrected. And you know, some people look at this as a fabricated story. But it's known for Paul, who meets Jesus, the resurrected Lord, on the road to Damascus. It's known for John, who says in 1 John chapter 1, that he saw him with his eyes and touched him with his hands. Known for Thomas, as we read in John 20, who says he won't believe unless he has his fingers in the marks of the nails in the hands of Jesus. And when Jesus presents himself before him, he believed. And so we know that we believe in this story of resurrection because Jesus Christ resurrected and because the Bible tells us so. And so at his resurrection, we see God's power manifested. We want to spend some time looking at what this means for God's power to be manifested. We are going to be reading from Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 to 10. And this is what the word of God says. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow, and for fear of him the gods trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there will I see them. We see that in, in these verses as we read, the verses before chapter 28, that Jesus Christ was crucified, he is laid in the tomb, and we see God's power manifested. First of all, we see God's power manifested, that when his power is manifested, there is life. In verse 5, we see the Bible is saying that the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. They were looking for this Jesus who was crucified. And he tells them in verse 6, He is not here, for he has risen. The Jesus they had crucified, they had killed, at this point was risen. So to say that death had no power on him, that he conquered the power of death. And you know what that means for you and I? Romans 8 verse 11 says, If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to you. So we know that because he conquered death, we are also conquerors of death. We know that because he has life, we also have life in him. Because Ephesians 2 1 says that we were dead in our sins, in our trespasses, we were dead. And 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says that for as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. 
So we know that in Christ Jesus, we are alive. We see the power of God manifested and there was life. Life in Jesus and that same life given to all of us. He says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, that this is a testimony that he who has the Son has eternal life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have eternal life. So after knowing that we have this life in Jesus Christ, after knowing that he's given us life, we are called not to keep quiet, but to go out there and tell this good news. Because in verse 7, he tells them, then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and behold is going before you to Galilee. Jesus tells the, the ladies, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, to go and tell the others. So after knowing that Jesus Christ was resurrected and because we believe this, we are called to go and tell others about it. Secondly, when God's power was manifested, there was victory. First of all, we've seen that when God's power was manifested, there was life. And secondly, when it was manifested, there was victory. In verse 66 of Matthew 27, it says, They made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. They had killed him. After killing him, they go and talk to Pilate. Those are the chief priests and the Pharisees, asking that the tomb should be made secure. And they made it secure with a stone and a guard. Actually, when you read Matthew 28, they're telling us that there were guards, not even one guard. And you know, when I was researching about the archaeology, about this stone that was laid there, we're told that this stone weighed about one to two tons, and that is about 2,000 kilograms. I remember, remember when I was in my vacation of senior four, I went to look for a job on a building and worked as a porter. On my first day, we were asked to go and buy cement in the town, and we were to carry it on our backs. And this cement weighed 50 kilograms. That day was so rough for me, and I regretted why I went for this kind of job. Just imagine, there are only 50 kgs, and this stone weighed 1,000 kgs. You can just imagine. Actually, they're saying between 1,000 to 2,000 kgs, which is 1 to 2 tons. This is how much the stone was heavy. We were also told that they put guards there. Possibly, they must have been the most skilled, most, I mean, the strongest of the guards. But... The Bible tells us that when, um, when, when the angel of the Lord comes, we are told that the stone was rolled away and that in verse 4, the gods trembled and became like they were dead men. So to say that this was the power of God manifested. The stone is rolled away, heavy as it was. The gods lying in fear and they seemed like they were dead. So I'm here to tell you that this means that it doesn't matter how heavy your sins are. It doesn't matter how heavy your guilt is. It doesn't matter how strong your addiction is or has its grips on you. We are told that when God's power is manifested, we have victory. And we see this victory even at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That even as much as this stone was heavy, it was rolled away. Even when these guys possibly were as skilled as, as anyone could think, we see them lying as if they are dead men. That is the power of God. That when God's power is manifested, there is life. That when God's power is manifested, there is victory. And lastly, when God's power is manifested, it cannot be limited. We are told in verse 13 that um, the elders and the chief priests uh, told the gods, uh, they gave them large sums of money to go and circulate news that the disciples of Jesus came and stole his body. So that's why he wasn't in the tomb. But actually, we know that this wasn't a success because if this news they had to circulate was right or if it became a success, we wouldn't be believing today. But this is about 2,000 years ago and now we still have the gospel to us written in our languages in Uganda, in English, in Unyankore, Uchiga, in any other language. That is proof that you cannot limit the power of God. They thought they could use their power, they could use their money, but... The power of God cannot be limited. And so as I conclude this, we look at this season as we remember the resurrected Lord and we see the power of God manifested. And we see that when God's power is manifested, we have life. 
life for us and life eternal. That when God's power is manifested, we have victory, victory over sin. It doesn't matter how huge it is. It doesn't matter how strong the addiction has its grip on you. You have victory. And we see that God's power knows no limitation. So how I pray that you find your strength, you find your hope and joy and everything in this God that resurrected, in the most and all-powerful God. May God bless you.